five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. Hello and welcome, everyone, back to Truth Beer and Consequences, the show where we talk about the Cincinnati Craft Beer Podcast, and we hope that there's not too many uh, consequences from the hosts of the other shows as we take on maybe our own liberties or speculations on what they really mean or what's going on, uh, you know, with the podcast or behind the mic. Uh, my name is Marco, and I'm a brewer here locally in the Cincinnati area, and I am joined by the best co-host in podcast co-host land. Thanks, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, too quick. <laughs> no, that was a joke, but uh, I'm Brian. I'm from Shift Beers, and I'm also a brewer. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm from Shift Beers also. So have you two ever been on a podcast before? Because you, you do a podcast, but you, have you been on them? Because you sound a little new at this. First time. First, First time, time for everything. Well, I'm, I'm Julia. I write funny-ish things about beer on social media. Julia, I think they're funny. Thank you, I Marco. also think they're very funny. I think they're funny. I will tell you right now that I am super intimidated by the amount of preparation that goes into this podcast versus they're, our podcast. Their fucking notes are laminated. <laughs> like yeah. laminated show sheets. Yeah, because I kept forgetting to push the red button to record. We would be like 45 minutes in, look down <laughs> and go, son of a... So I had to do something drastic. Yeah, our, our, The laminated yeah. sheets were born. She went to Kinko's, so... I did. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hell yeah. So... What about the customer? Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> Screw it. Screw it. <laughs> As any good beer podcast does, we all have beers in front of us. Do. So, yep. Chris, you want to start with what? Uh, yes, guess first, please. Drinking today? Uh, I am drinking. Uh, so we are very, very fortunate to be at BC's Bottle Lodge, and literally in the uh, the wake of their uh, Flavor Town Beer Festival. So the tap list is out of control it's, right now. How would you call it, Brian? I'd say it was uh, maybe bus and bus and no cap. Would uh, be mine. Yeah. That's about right. So my expert opinion. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it couldn't be described any better. This is the adult peanut butter cup from the Butcher and the Barrel in Cleveland. It is a, uh, a peanut butter and chocolate imperial stout that was aged in a bourbon barrel, and it is. You can't get any and better than that. No cap. No, it's so no. dumb. Yeah, I taste it. It's very well done. Very well balanced. Very I'm not good. like a huge pastry beer person myself, but. That is one that I would easily drink. It's not like overly sweet. By nice. Any means. Good. What about you, Brian? I'm drinking the Blood Orange Double IPA from Westside Brewing here in Cincinnati. One of my favorite breweries. It is also one of my favorite breweries. If I see a beer that I have not tried, it is easily in the first, first or second beer that I drink if I'm consuming multiple. I believe they're doing another special uh, beer vent calendar release for the Higher Gravity Beer Vent Bucks again this year. Oh, shit. Like last year was their farmhouse. Right. Plum Farm, no, not the Plum Farmhouse. It was a farmhouse. I don't remember what the flavor variant was, but it was gotcha. really good. It was very, very good. Nice. Marco, what do you have? I have, uh, well, I was at Flavortown, so I got to imbibe in, in a lot of what was going on at Flavortown, mm -hmm. and the board is full of big, beautiful adjuncted stouts and sours, which uh, my body chemistry will not allow me uh, to right. enjoy. Mm. Not in the moment I can enjoy it. It's uh, Shortly later. Shortly thereafter. Later. Shortly thereafter. <laughs> nobody around me will enjoy any of that. So what I have, I went to the cooler, and I picked out a just a giant bottle of Sierra Nevada. Big-ass bottle. Torpedo, extra IPA. Uh, you know what you love at 7.2 ABV. It is classically delicious. That's a perfect Excellent. beer. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. It yeah. really is. Good any time of day, night, season, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, and I'll round up the uh, the board. I am drinking an Alematic Artisan Ale called Bohemian Trapsody. It's an 8% New England IPA. Uh, you guys might remember several episodes ago, we covered the Bruce Traveler Outcast podcast episode where they went to Ailmatic. Mm -hmm. So when I saw one on the board, went, haven't been up there yet, definitely want to give it a try, and it is wonderful. I'm loving it. I'm have to get that next. Yeah. Awesome. And I think I'm going to round back after this, I'm going to round back to the west side, uh, Blood side. Orange. Yeah. Uh, so also, <laughs> so uh, as we uh, start the show and... Uh, I want to give, just like Chris did, a big shout out to our gracious podcast host, BC's Bottle Lodge, where the Cintas guy keeps everything fresh, uh, Super so fresh. fresh and so clean, 
It is this place. I tell you what, if you are looking to drink in an absolutely wonderful smelling environment, <laughs> just you come out here to BC's. BC's Bottle Lodge. Yeah. That's such uh, a good joke. I love it. <laughs> uh, producer Kenny. Shout out to Kenny. Shout, Shout out, out to, to Kenny. producer Kenny. Yeah. He shaved his face. He did. Yeah. He did. Good. You might Looks not good. recognize him. Kenny's my beer consultant for the podcast, um, more often than not. Yeah. So that was our, our host, BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery. Mm-hmm. Uh, today's show, I do want to say, is not sponsored by the Newport Report. No. So if you love shift beers but are, are listening thinking it needs more sports, it needs more flannel, <laughs> it needs better accents, go to the Newport Report. It needs more flannel. It is, right. it is a great group of guys that, that rate Canadian craft beer and talk about sports and all kind of other things that they get so deep in the weeds about that I don't even know how to describe it. Right. They did mention that they were trying to do a burp count on their latest episode. Yes. They were, yes, they were they trying did. to get, um, to trying to hit the ship beers record of 15 burps in the first 10 minutes. So I counted. So Newbert Report, here is your burp count Be for careful. season two, episode 10. Why? Because... <laughs> We record tomorrow. I know. And I am not afraid of this. Well, we don't release until Friday. Yeah, we don't release oh, that's until Friday. So you're good. Okay, all right, good. You're good. So in the first 10 minutes, they only had six burps. Okay, sweet. Amateur yeah. hour, right? <laughs> <laughs> they burp but, like they chug twisted teeth. But bro. <laughs> they were doing a lot more talking, and there were only two of them. So it's sure. kind of harder for them to, for one person to be drinking as much to really get those burps as it is well, for if, four. Yeah, for if you out, had yeah. to prorate yeah. it then, but it, that's still... I'm just saying, I'm just saying, hey, this is, this, is their very, this is their very first burp count. So, okay. you know... I'm, We'll give him this one. Uh, in total, so so the burp count for anyone who is new, and before we get to the shift beer segment, um, for every burp on shift beers, you drink an average of two ounces of liquid, which for the Canadians would be 59 milliliters. <laughs> I did the I did, nice the, ma- work on the, I did the math I for it. our Canadian friends. We were number 74 on the Canadian food uh, podcast chart. Hey, so yeah. so How about that? I think we topped out at 97. Yeah. Nice. You guys are crushing nice. it. Yeah. Uh, so the total for the episode... Was 23 overall, which is in American 46 ounces or 1,360 milliliters, which boils down to if you were drinking during the Nubit report, you would only need to consume 2.875 pints of beer. Uh, Amateur hour. Yeah. Amateur hour. But you know, hey, they did a lot of talking. So, cute. So, Nubit report, thank you for not being our sponsor this week. Look forward to the next episode. Loved it. Fantastic. Welcome, guests. Yeah, Thank welcome, you. welcome. Thank you for having us. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, for those of you who are new to Truth, Beer, and Podsequences, thank you for coming along this journey. Uh, we welcome you. For those of you who have been on this journey for all 10 of our episodes now, thank you. Tell your friends, share it, um, tell your parents, uh, let them know uh, where they can find podcasts on the phone that they use for, like, I, making calls uh, because <laughs> they're like, it, you know, you're like, hey, just text me. And they're like, ah, uh, well, I could just call you. Yeah. Well, yeah. and then their phone does other things. And then you can show them how to find podcasts like the great podcasts in the Cincinnati area and the Newbert Report if they're into hockey. And if they're not into hockey, maybe you can get them into hockey. More along the lines of, of what I was thinking is if you're new to the show or if you're a long-time listener, long time, 10 episodes. Right. Yeah. Uh, Practically forever. We've had one quarter. guest on before. Mm-hmm. And what you don't know is because it's not a visual medium for those of you who don't subscribe to the Patreon at the, uh, the, 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 Chris, the Chris level, yeah. uh, which is the $499 level where on shift beers, Chris would uh, go ahead and murder someone for you. Right. Uh, that level for us is a visual medium, mm-hmm. and our recording equipment uh, was really small. It was meant for a cozy two-person <coughs> podcast. Uh, we have upgraded, ladies and gentlemen, and so we can have guests. Nice. Many guests. Many and our guests. our first official. official guest that Marco is not sharing a microphone with, because that was kind of awkward. John did great, <laughs> but it was a little yeah, awkward. But it was a little bit like a... Little bit like a, a you know how they have the center in, in American football, and so the it's the guard. Nice. We don't do burp counts on our show. You got to so have something special the, for shift beers. Yeah, right. It's the tackle <laughs> next to him. How uh, the tackle 
for whatever reason, this doesn't give the snap count away where the tackle like taps the center on the leg. Sure. And then oh, the ball snapped. Oh, it's his snapped. leg he's tapping? <laughs> I don't know. The, well, <laughs> this, this completely changes the whole game for me. I don't... Yeah. <laughs> All right. So... Learn something new every day. So what I would have to do is I'd have to tap John on the leg to get the <laughs> microphone back when John was on the phone. All right. Um, excuse me. When John was holding the microphone How and then pass it you? back. Very old. <laughs> we're all struggling. <laughs> it is. Very old. But we're having fun. The That's most. That's all that matters. So, and yes, we've upgraded our equipment. So yes. hopefully the production value comes up. And if it didn't this episode, stick with us for another 10. I <laughs> promise. I promise we're going to get better at this. Yeah. That thing's a beaut. It really is. Yeah, it's yep. like, very colorful. Yep. So should we take a real quick break and figure out what podcast we're going to talk about today? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do it. And we are back. So most of the table has refilled their glasses. Um, I'm still drinking the same thing. It takes me a while to get through a beer. Marco had a freaking bomber of torpedoes, so <laughs> he just kind of finished pouring the rest of it. Yeah, he just topped himself off. Uh, Chris, what'd you get? Preacher from Northern Row. Nice. <laughs> yep, I told you. <laughs> I asked for what you wanted, and he's like, here's this one instead. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. Yep, Thank I you, producer Ken. I got number 16. Kenny knows where it's at. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I'm, Brian? I'm drinking the regional snacks. It's a Pilsner from Hoof Hearted. Ooh, nice. Uh, it's double dry hot Pilsner. Okay, so. That makes sense. Yeah. I was wondering why it didn't taste like a Pilsner. <laughs> yeah. Well, there. I <clears throat> said the same thing. Yeah, she happy, though. Yeah. Uh, leave that in. Well, yeah. I, I have to leave that in because <laughs> we're going to cover shipped beers first in honor of the two of you. Being here, yeah, welcome Being our guests. First official guests. What yeah. is the podcast called? It's called Shift Beers. Shift Beers it sounds okay. Yeah. So Shift Beers is a podcast where a group of people in the brewing industry just have a beer after work, talk about beer, drink good, bad, crazy shit. Yeah. 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 So uh, they're a regular group of characters, regular cast of characters. Uh, you've got. Uh, Brian, uh, that is a, a button mm -hmm. and claims to be a brewer and a distiller. <laughs> you have Chris, who uh, he says he pours beers, but what he does is he manages. Just he drives around the city and the state, he, really. Multiple yeah, tap does. rooms. Yep. And then I guess, I, I don't know, if someone has an accident and puts in an accident claim. Uh, <laughs> then there's the Brian. Cans. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm excuse, uh, excuse me. Then there's Josh, mm -hmm. uh, who is social media and marketing. Basically, he plays on Facebook all day. Yep. All day. Accurate. Yeah. And then there is Beth. The best of the bunch. Who does uh, graphic design. Yeah. And then more. And everybody uh, on the podcast, except Brian, because Brian's a button, everybody on the podcast has many things that they do. Uh, that is just sort of a highlight. Yes, of kind of their main... If someone asks for an official job description, that's what they have to write down. Yeah, it's on, yeah. It's on their... Um, uh, email signature sort yes, of thing. Yes, yep. I would say business card, but, I mean, we're moving towards the we're paperless digital, digital age. Well, and, and we're also looking at chicken nugget connoisseurs kind of stuff right. on business yeah, cards, and it's just unprofessional all around. Yeah. What, is your, what does your business card say, Chris? Uh, it's the monkey in charge of bananas. <laughs> is it really? Yes. That That's is good. fantastic. That's wonderful. I love it. Yep. I love it. So episode 53 of Shift Beers was their fall beer show, which basically boils down to everything was pumpkin beers. Yep. So it they did, were basic it, bitches all around. Yes, it, we well, were. It, I, I only saw at the beginning the fall beer show, and I thought it was just where everybody drank till they fell down. Yep. But it was actually where they drank... Like autumn and fall beer types. Yes. <laughs> the fall well, beer. The, the we show. usually, fall we usually drink. We usually record the show laying down anyway to avoid any accidents. Yeah. yeah. On the carpet in your office? That yeah. sounds awful. No, it it's smells good. like natter days. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it smells yeah. like natter days and dirty socks. <laughs> yep. I was going to say, I, I was in that office and smelled like socks. <laughs> Yep. So, but any so uh, <laughs> they started off. They start off. Uh, they did have a guest. They had two uh, guests technically. They did. Mm -hmm. uh, one guest uh, was with them from start to the end of the mm -hmm. recorded episode. Uh, you can go ahead and give us the after after show. Uh, shift beers after dark. Shift, shift beers after dark after we stop recording. Uh, or I don't know if it's pertinent to the show. I mean, during the recording. I mean, I did take Mitch home after the show. Is that what you guys are asking? To that's, your that's house? That's pretty yeah. much. Yep. Yeah. 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 I don't see nothing wrong. 
<laughs> with a little bump and grind. I love the piano. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's a full out production, even yeah. though there's no video uh, yet for this. It is a full out production. The $499 Patreon. Patreon so. So. Premium platinum. So, tier. Mitch, formerly of Fretboard, he mm-hmm. was a social media director, also uh, did visual content for them, yeah. uh, is uh, a, a friend of the show. Uh, our show and friend of Shift Beer Show, and he is moving on. Uh, so congratulations, Mitch. Sounds like you're moving on up. Uh, as we all know from the live Shift Beers episode at Fredboard, there's nothing good in those glasses. No. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those but are some of the best jokes I've ever delivered right to somebody's face. Yeah. Right. If you guys have not listened to the Shift Beers episode live at Fredboard, go back, listen to it. It's ridiculous it's one of the best episodes and if you have listened it's worth a re-listen because it's (laughs) hilarious and great uh mitch joins the show and if you were a follower of ship beers or a listener of ship beers uh mitch had been on the show before Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you know that mitch's wheelhouse is cider Mm -hmm. yes specifically 1911 cider that's right those ciders are the best ciders i've ever had yeah they're really good they are like it's it's weird that like, I'm gonna put it in my calendar like Mitch's trip back home every year like I'm gonna I want him to fill out a vacation request for me so I can put it in an order next time he goes right yeah because it's well like, well well one of the ciders the apple cider donut got a triple bussin from did. you guys you can't triple bus a double bus no we trip we triple bust it yeah where was don't, I don't you, you were there uh, on the asleep. floor probably <laughs> and they're <laughs> so. they're also a distillery which is unique I mean I there's not mm-hmm. many places that are like that I mean. I can't uh, think of one. No, either. No, yeah. no. Not many places like that. <laughs> uh, but the crossover was was good, and was. you know there were comments about how uh, it, it, it ranged from tasty, enjoyable to understanding that the distillery is young, right, Brett? Right, right, right. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, the bourbon definitely had a lot more like dry oak to it than you would prefer in a bourbon, but it was still well done. You could tell they just just a little bit young. Cool. So, also, uh, since the show had, it was very pumpkin beer heavy at the mm-hmm. beginning. Yes. And we definitely got to a point where uh, it seemed like everybody had their fill of pumpkin beer for the season. Is this what you would recommend on, uh, you know, to craft beer lovers say, hey, you know what? Um, I'd imagine you'd say pumpkin beers deserve a place. Would, would you say, why don't you do this? Just get three or four uh, twelve ounce bottles, whatever whatever right. format you can get, and uh, yeah, just bottles. get this out of your system, uh, and then move on to something better. Schwartz beers. <laughs> yeah, I love pumpkin beer, so I. I, I do think they're too. good. I yeah. just can't do them the entire month of October. No, no, not me either. No, yeah. but, but. Uh, okay, so uh, Brian, uh, the B in Brian stands for. Bussin. Button. Button. Uh, oh, so that too. Yep. Button, Brian. Uh, I give him credit you said as a real you love person. Pumpkin beers. So, how many pumpkin beers did you have this summer? <laughs> I think probably close to 15 or 16 different ones. Yeah. The, I'm just in joking. June July. July. I'm just giving you shit. It's a full blown lie. I had zero. Full blown zero. Okay. No, you had. No, you didn't. Just till the podcast. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So, since you love pumpkin beers, how many pumpkin beers? Have you had in pumpkin beer season? How many do we have on the show? There were five. <laughs> I had five. Yeah. Okay, that's my point. All right, so everyone <laughs> who loves pumpkin beer, it's like I love it today, and then it's uh, tomorrow. I'm 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 moving on. Fair yeah, no, you're fans. absolutely right. Yeah, you're you're right that it, it is a highly seasonal uh, offering. But I, my I love it. Like I love pumpkin beer. Like I've I've pump. There aren't a lot of good ones. I love the good ones. I had pumpkin. Yeah. This year, mm-hmm. which is like the the staple, the kind gold of. standard. Yeah. Um, I had the and these are all like four packs that I brought home, mm-hmm. uh, or six packs. I had the uh, Taffs, the pumpkin frishes, pie. Frishes. Frishes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and that's it. I had pumpkin this weekend too. I lied. So I've had six. So okay. speaking of having pumpkin beers in the summer, I bought a six pack of Dad this weekend. <laughs> Fuck seasonal creep, bro. It's, it's out of control. Well, what what did what do you have, Marco? That was dropped off for. I thought it was just for us, but then apparently everyone yeah, in the freaking world so got a can. Shout out to a friend of the show, Derek, from Fifty West, for dropping by some Christmas cookie 
uh, for the show. We it's will... too early for Christmas cookie. Yes. Well, I'll drink it, the hell no, out of it. He, right. it, it's, it came, it. <laughs> it, it it's, it's out, and so he dropped it off for mm-hmm. Truth, Beer, and Podsequences. And I strongly encourage those of you who are out there, whether you're you know, just a, um, a listener who wants us to try something or a brewery that wants us to talk about something, drop it off here to BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery to our producers, uh, Kenny, Brian, uh, ben, the uh, BC and BCs, and uh, make sure to mark that it's for truth bearing consequences because if not, uh, the B and BCs is just going to take it home. Yeah. And, yep. But thank you very much. Uh, I We appreciate it. And when we get around to Christmas beers, we will drink it. Mm-hmm. Point is, you were talking about Seasonal Creek. It's real, it's true, and it's, it's not going away. It's just going to get worse. I think the bigger point came up in your show when you talked to Sean, where Sean was saying, look, if you like something and you see it in, in, in packaged out in the in the wild, in the environment, right. grab some. And if you're not ready to drink it, just sit on it. Sure. Yeah. You know, yep. I mean... But, and for uh, those of you going, wait a second, who is Sean? Where did he show up? Uh, Sean White from Nostalgia Brewing up outside of Columbus, Kahana. Is that how you pronounce the city? Yep. <laughs> uh, he, he called in uh, later on in the show. So we'll get some good insight on, on all things pumpkin because, like Brian, he loves pumpkin beers. Well, and this also, too, there was uh, this new seltzer released. Uh, it was... Um, it was released locally. It was called uh, Baja Blast Off. And so mm-hmm. I guess apparently pumpkin season correlates with uh, B- Baja Blast Off season. And which, so, which obviously. correlated with Saunders' new emoji release. So there are yeah. rocket ships all rocket over the fucking ships. place right now. Yep. Yep. Rocket ships. <laughs> that beer is fucking buzzing. It's pretty good. <laughs> So to circle back to to shift beer, some of the other fun things about the episode that everyone needs to listen to. Josh learned the word encouragement. It's true. He was very confused about how to, like, show appreciation and to try to, like, get someone into something. And I think it might have been Beth that said, you mean encouragement? Yeah, we're really proud of, like, his development and his vocabulary that he's been working on. It's getting good. It's getting very good. (laughs) And then, Chris, you and Josh went to the Northern Wrestling Federation, which... Sounded like you guys had an absolute blast. I want to go the next time you guys go because it, it, it's so freaking as, fun. I'd love to go yeah. as well. For those of you who didn't fun. listen to the show, Chris is about to fill us in on some fun oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. He's, he's is, shaking it's with anticipation. So, it's so weird because I am not – like, I don't watch WWE anymore. Like, yeah. when I was a kid, I was all the way into oh, it. Oh, yeah. Same. It's the attitude same. All the way, right? It, exactly, right? So it was like Stone Cold. And it, none, of that, n- none of that matters. But I am an educated wrestling fan to know that it is courteous to boo the heels. Yeah fucking hard yeah and cheer the baby faces as hard as you possibly (laughs) can and we absolutely like laid in so much so that two of the heels like came over and got in my face and yelled at me nice um and you know we got high fives from the baby faces and for for being proper wrestling fans fans. even though i'd never heard of any of these guys (laughs) before in my life i was all in um and they put on a good show it was so fun it was such a good show so fun yeah. I'd be down for that. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, uh, what what would your wrestling character profile be then? And we're going to go around the table. Oh so God. Uh, Chris is going to go first because I'm sure he's thought about this. Uh, he's probably dreamed about this. And when I say dreamed about this, I mean, going back all the way, he talked to like you know, WWE oh. and, you know, with things where you had uh, like uh, Superfly Jimmy Snuka. You had, you know, Coco Beware. You had, I mean, just all kinds of craziness. And both of those don't match your complexion profile. No. But we're all all inclusive <laughs> here, true beer, so, true beer so and consequences. Would you, let's just go simple. Would you be a face or a heel? I would be a face. Okay. I would be a face, though, like the the, the anti-hero. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. fair. So the one that I, kind of flip-flops a yeah, little bit and you're not kind really of, kind sure. Of like a bad boy. It's kind of like, yeah, like a bad boy. You know? Yeah, no, I would... Like, uh, this is getting a beefcake? Uh, a little um, bit. Okay. Um, maybe a little less... A little more cake. A little less cake, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more cake, fuck, less that was a good beef. joke. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a... Uh, that's, that's probably it, but I, I think okay. I would... I mean, obviously, based on the Patreon levels, I would be the assassin. Nice. Yeah. Ah, true. 100%. True. 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 Yeah. Yep. Uh, yes, guest. Brian, you're, you're a guest, so you would go uh, before Julia, and then Julia, because, uh, you know, 
<laughs> girls, you know, why, ladies yeah. first. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I never really watched wrestling that much, but I know for a fact that I would probably, because of my aggressive fandom of Power Rangers, oh, God. that I would mm. probably just be a putty. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me a heel, I assume, yeah. right? I yeah, don't know what those terms mean, but Yeah, heels yeah. are like the bad guys. The bad guys. Yeah, so yeah, I would be faces, yeah. I would be someone dressed up like, <laughs> like hopefully a putty, putty or uh That'd be awesome. Uh, an elaborate costume that had lots of layers to be a a, a classic Power Rangers villain. Which yeah, also the gnarly gnome is an old school Mighty Morphin Power Rangers villain. It's true. He is. So maybe I would be that. It's true. That would be amazing. Yeah. Or probably just a buddy. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, it's a Julia. Julia. Heel. Are you on the spot? Heel all the way. Really? Okay. Fucking yeah. All right. <laughs> because no one expects a like five foot two, you know, it's That's to true. just tear some shit down. Uh, I I really loved Ray Mysterio uh, in nice. my younger days. <laughs> Why? And, uh, well, uh, because I... <laughs> I Probably am two inches taller <laughs> and in heels. And uh, I don't know, some some uh, some version of Rey Mysterio, but with a little more girth. Right. So uh, Rey girth stereo. Right. I don't know. I'm not sure. Rey thick stereo. Rey thick stereo. Kind of like, like girth stereo. Girth stereo. Girth stereo. Yeah. If you yeah. can slide yeah. the phrase girth in, or the, the word girth in anything. anything. Do yeah. it. Right. Do it. Yeah. So cool. girth, girth stereo. Yeah. That would that would be me. So I would so, I would be I would attempt to fly and then would you know, like fly and, and pound on somebody and I would just fall short and just like <laughs> short, total like total, your height. total belly flop onto the thing and, and miss the person. That's so. great. I love it so much. That's great. So speaking of girth, you guys did banger in a box again. Well, we did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. So I'm not going to give away who, who won because I want people to listen to the episode. <laughs> that's, hey, that's how it was metric. However, it was Beth metric. Won. It wasn't, you know. You're eliminated. <laughs> I got eliminated. <laughs> Beth beat me. Hopefully the videos will be up on Patreon soon. Beth was Can't like, wait for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's... she's it was Beth versus, Beth versus Brian. Yep. And then Mitch versus Chris. Yeah. Good time. Fucking Mitch. Let's just say we're sitting on the losing side of the table. For that episode, I'm still undefeated in the uh, Shift Beers tournament. Yeah. That's right. Our episode is out. Because yeah. you're the yeah. best. The <laughs> best. That's not true. I love it. I have to go. Yeah, I did too. Okay. And get my kiddo. So the thank you for getting Mitch to say that because just kind of wrap up Shift Beers real yeah. fast before you have to go. Uh, Mitch can smell babies. Yes. And congratulations <laughs> to Sean White on his new baby. Yes. Speaking of Congrats, smelling Sean. babies and all that. so Baby smelling tortillas. Yes. <laughs> yes like, like their heads. You just got to yeah. get real close to that, that big yeah. soft forehead that yep. they have. Yep. Um, and there was a new bonus beer jingle sound courtesy of the, the Newbert, Newbert Report. Report. So, yeah, it was a great show. Everyone go out and listen to episode 53, the fall show, a.k.a. all the pumpkin beers. Listen to all their episodes. Subscribe to them on Patreon. Follow them at Shift Beers Everywhere. And thank you, Chris and Brian, for uh, for taking some time and sitting down thank with us. So thank you so much. Thank you guys for having us. Thank yeah. you for having us. We're yeah. going to crash this party again sometime soon. For sure. Looking Love forward it. to it. We're bringing everybody. And we are back. Was- Absolute blast. Thank you to... Chris and uh, Button Brian from the Chef Bears crew for joining us mm-hmm. on really what is the inaugural episode of our equipment upgrade. Yes. That, yes. That's fantastic. And part of the equipment upgrade is that we have the ability to have more than just Julia and I on the show. Yeah. We both have fresh glasses. Mm-hmm. So uh, what do you have? I have drank this on the show before mm-hmm. because here at BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery, they have... Several coolers. Sorry about the one that the kid broke. Uh, I can't that believe is, they haven't fixed that yet. They haven't fixed it yet. I th- think what they're doing is getting estimates and then going to present a uh, uh, an invoice to Truth Beer Pod. So please uh, drop off along with beers or, or things you like us to drink. Uh, drop off things like uh, cash donations or, or attorney business cards. Yeah. Uh, so what I have is Coors Banquet Beer, Coors. Coors. Coors Banquet Kurs. Beer, uh, uh, d- uh, in honor of Danny Harold, uh, who's yeah. a avid Coors uh, Banquet Beer guy. And so I'm drinking a Coors. Excellent. What do you have, Julia? I'm sticking with my Elmatic theme, and I have their stout, uh, Dancing in the Dark. 
uh, Billy Idol dancing in the dark. We were dancing in the dark. Oh, she tasty. Nice. Aromatic. Great job. They are, as as the Bruce Traveler Outcast podcast proclaimed from the top of the mountain, both of these beers that I've had from them here at BC's Bottle Lodge are banging. They are bussing, bussing, bussing. Bussing, bussing. That was, that was just a double bussing. That wasn't a triple bussing. I kind of stumbled over myself there. So Yeah, I mean, it it's good. one of those things. Good. You got to you gotta hold on to the triple, uh, triple bussing. It's so, true. But I was here at Flavortown this past weekend at BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery. I did see the blue uh, bruised traveler, uh, Matt Damaris. I also saw a quick trip, uh, Mark Miller. Mark Miller, uh, one of his bands performed at Flavortown. Uh, it was excellent. The, his bluegrass band uh, performed. And so we've covered what uh, what our glasses are refilled with. Let's move on to the next podcast. Uh, we only have two more to go through tonight. So we asked the ship beer uh, crew to pick the order for the rest of the podcast, and they said, uh, "Why not do Sonder Stories next?" and then uh, handle everything gnome to close the show out. And that sounded like an excellent idea to us, so we will move on to Sonder Stories, Chapter 76 with Will. So the uh, Sonder Stories had Will, Chad, Justin, and Danny Mm -hmm. on on the show. Uh, Will is their shift lead and bartender extraordinaire. He is the glue that holds the bartending staff together, more or less. Uh, he's poured us beers, Julia. He has poured us beers. Yep. And he was very good at it, which I mean, I guess is is a skill that you need if you're, if you're the lead of, of the bartendery. Yes, uh, the the bartenderness. Mm-hmm. He <laughs> <laughs> made him sound so sensitive it's there. <laughs> He's he's so caring. He's he's very gentle he's with your glasses. Gentle bartender, and just the bartenderness, just which is actually <laughs> <laughs> he's a very he's a great guy. He's a great he's guy, fantastic. very very good bartender. Uh, he's poured us beers. He's poured mm-hmm. my beer, uh, yep. you know, on several occasions. Matter of fact, if you follow Sonder on social media. Uh, a picture of Will, which they did not name Will, mm-hmm. but a picture of Will was up there, and they said, it's Friday, you deserve a beer, and a picture of Will is there. start stalking Saunders' uh, social media in order to, to find that. Yeah. Did you hear that Will originally turned down the job at Saunders? He did. Mm-hmm. He did. Uh, and there was a little bit of a moment on the story, because they did talk about Andy, who was the front of house manager for Sonder and uh, unfortunately Andy passed away. Uh, Andy's a brother of one of the founders, um, Daniel, uh, Daniel Schmer. And, you know, that, that, that was sad. But what was also cool if you follow Sonder's uh, social media is that there's a picture, uh, I guess, at the, um, at the airport, CBG, uh, where there's a picture of Sonder tapping a uh, a cask for their Oktoberfest, mm-hmm. and Andy's pictured there, and so uh, Jeff and I guess the Sonder team was going out to hop selection. Uh, that picture of Sonder tapping that keg had Andy in it, and so that's everybody, very cool. Everybody who's either leaving or coming uh, to Cincinnati is welcomed by a picture of Andy. So that's extremely special. Their mantra almost, everyone has a story. Yes. And that is part of Sonder's cor- story. That's one of their, I mean, that, that it's is... It's a core part of their core mission statement almost. Yes. You could, you could say, yeah. Yep. So Good that times. was great. And so uh, Will uh, said, you know what? Uh, after going to Sonder, mm-hmm. uh, having Otto... Yes. And having an experience there, he went home and was. It kept him awake. He, he was he was trying to sleep and and turning down the job kept him awake. He was already a bartender mm-hmm. at two other places, and it kept him awake so much where he communicated with Andy at maybe two in the morning and said, Do, um, "Is that is that position still available?" Andy got back to him. Absolutely, let's 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 you know come yeah. on board. So Will's Will's been on on staff for for quite a while with Sonder. Mm-hmm. It's having uh, a really great experience. You can tell 
through the episode that he really loves being a part of Sonder. He he did drop one of his other gigs yes. as a bartender, but still has another one. So uh, he's a hustler. And well, what, how's that go again? What is he? Hustler, baby. We love we love hustlers around here. We do. You know. Um, so uh, working with Sonder, uh, enjoying it. He is. He just. He talks about how just really great the gig is over there at Sonder, and he almost passed it up. Yeah. So speaking of of Otto, which I think is one of. I don't want to call it the best Sonder beers because it's one of my favorite Sonder beers, hands down. Um, Otto and all of its variants, which they have a special one. It's either coming out soon or it is already out. Um, a Neapolitan Otto, which sounds phenomenal. Hopefully I can get my hands on on a can or two. Uh, but they did drop a, a fun little trivia nugget about Otto season. And the number of cars in their parking lot. Ah, we are leaving you with... (laughs) uh, Leaving you hanging a little bit. Can't can't give you everything because the purpose of Truth Beer Consequences is really to encourage you to listen to these other podcasts and not just ours. Yes, and so it shows that uh, have things in them that are are truths or, or foretelling are called Easter eggs. Uh, I guess, I don't know what will we call what we're doing. Uh, yeah. So moving on back to, to Sonder Stories and Will, Will's been in training for the last like year and a half-ish, like mm-hmm. through COVID. He's been training to punch people. Yes. Yeah. So this was really cool. Um, shout out to my wife who listens to the show. Uh, but she also has gone to me, uh, gone with me to... Uh, 50 West punch out uh, twice nice and the last punch out that we went to will was in attendance now of course we didn't know will Mm -hmm. uh, but will was in attendance and will has a whole story about his uh, you know experience and involvement in 50 West punch out he really really felt the vibe oh totally he really felt the vibe and uh, by the way when a punch out was a thing and hopefully punch out is going to be a thing in in the future mm-hmm. it's got to be one of the best brewery events in probably the country i mean there's no doubt that in the midwest or or you know maybe even further than that it's it's one of the coolest events that you could attend uh but for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about uh, well, first of all, let me backtrack. Julia, have you been to Punch Out? I have not, but I definitely want to go to the next one. Okay. For sure. So let me fill the guests in on what Punch Out is. So 50 West, a brewery here locally in Cincinnati, mm-hmm. hosted essentially a brewery versus brewery boxing event where uh, they submitted uh, challengers and they were afforded the opportunity for uh instruction and training and then there's an entire production where you know there's djs there's video boards there's you know intro music there's there's um um, it's like as close to a professional boxing event as as possible right there's entourages and flags and you know um, um, robes and and the big flowy shorts that all the boxers seem to wear everything everything i'm I'm excited and and it's brewery versus brewery Mm -hmm. you know they put out you know the 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 visual medium on on this person but this person and and it's uh it's not just men uh there are uh women fights as well Mm mm-hmm and so it's a it's a wonderful wonderful production and you get out there and you get to watch uh, amateurs these are all amateurs well but they're amateurs that if you listen to uh, i believe the gnarly nim covered it on on a cincy brewcast episode quite a while ago since one did not happen last year one is not happening this year uh, about it i mean these these contest i don't want to call them contestants that's the wrong word um these athletes participants 
for the participants, they train hard for this. It's not like they just say, oh, yeah, that 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 thing's tomorrow. Sure, sign me up. We're just going to, like, randomly wave our fists in the air. And if I happen to, you know, they train, like, with a capital T for Did this, which is what Will's been doing. I, I could be wrong, but didn't Button Brian participate? Oh, yeah. He, hands no, he, he hands mentioned down. that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, in in uh, in shift beers. Yeah, yeah, in the ultra lightweight catalog. Ca- catalog. No, ultra, ultra lightweight category. Just ultra light, uh, representing the seltzer category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what Fifty West Punch Out does is instead of having like lightweight, heavyweight, featherweight, all the the you know typical boxing things, what they like to do is you know the seltzer category, the blondes, the. You know, all the way up through, like, the stout, the porter category for the, the heavyweight, the super heavyweight. It's it's phenomenal. I can't wait to go next year. It's an Again, amazing event. next year, my, as long as My wife it. has enjoyed the event everywhere that uh, every year that she's been. Nice. And it, I can't wait for it to come back. And somehow... Neither can Will. Somehow, uh, you know, um, immerse in that experience. But, yes, mm-hmm. Will was inspired that yeah. day. And yeah. he said... I, w- I want to do this. I want to be a participant. And so Will has been uh, training mm-hmm. at uh, boxing venues. And he got to a point where he needed to upgrade his training from uh, a place kind of similar to like LA Fitness to where he needed to upgrade his training to somewhere where, you know, there's a, a little more sparring uh, involved. Uh, yeah. Sparring, less air conditioning. Mm-hmm. You know, an old sort of gritty person yeah. y- yelling at you, like, I- you know, and and just like, yeah, yeah, you, you, you gotta get in there and get a get a body shot. You know, just it, you know. And so he's he's immersed in this, and so he's a he's a very fit uh, person, mm-hmm. which is kind of it kind of. Is following a trend for Sonder where... Um, well, that's mostly the production team. I think we covered this two episodes ago with Dylan. Yeah, Dylan. You know, the, beautiful the, Dylan. The beautiful Dylan. Beautiful yeah. Dylan, yeah. So beautiful we know that Dylan. all that, that most of the production staff, that they work out, and almost all of them skip leg day except for Dylan. Yeah. Will is front of house. Front of house, And yep. he does not skip leg day. Well... He I mean, works out. He's He's part of that that crew yeah yeah i mean they're they're looking to take over the burbs mm-hmm. you know like they're with their with their team uh they're assembling their team and and it's uh, it's uh it's gonna be fierce it's gonna oh, be yeah. fearsome yeah it's gonna be great but yeah, it was it was um there's a couple other things about the show they touched on their favorite tv series their favorite movies they went over you know dream vacations you know where would they go if if money was no object if time was no of no concern, um, that type of thing. Jamaica or Hawaii were the dream. Uh, yeah, Will's the dream never, vacation. Will's never been to Jamaica, so he thought, um, "Hey, when, how about Hawaii?" Yes, yeah, then that is 100% accurate. That is what he said, not something that we're making up. Um, it was a brilliant revelation for him to make. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely check it yeah, out. Um, I have to tell you, Julia. Yeah, I totally follow Will. Mm-hmm. I've never been to Jamaica. I have not either. But uh, have you been to Hawaii? Hawaii? I've never. I've not. No. Been, no. But I'd like to go. I would too. So, so Will, next time you go to either Jamaica or Hawaii, Marco and I are more than willing to be your travel companions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Will, I mean, you've uh, poured us beers. We've been cordial. Uh, yeah. You know, let us know when when we want to do that whole trip. Yeah. Uh, we could it it. Uh, we could take the podcast equipment and uh, never know. Maybe, uh, maybe Truth Beer Pod can have some Go sort of location. write-off uh, situations Ooh. happening. Uh, I don't know. Do we need to get that LLC established first before we can write off trips like that? So I've, I've business trip. Did yep. you have anything else on on Sonder stories? No, everything was great. Everything yeah. was awesome. Yeah, it was great to get to know Will on on the podcast, and I'll just close out by uh, I agree with Danny 100% that Daughtry was robbed in American Idol. I'm going to disagree with you there. Oh, okay. Uh, Says um, the person with no musical uh, repertoire other than Hollow Notes. I'm going to disagree with you there. (laughs) Um, Daughtry was not robbed. Okay, okay. And is 
Uh, I'm happy for him and whatever success he has. Uh, right. I, I, I don't say that, you know, I, I'm glad that he got success outside of American Idol, but he, he probably should. He, sh- he should have won, uh, is, is my opinion. Uh, no. Eh. Eh. No. Eh. No. All right. All opinions uh, shared by the hosts of Truth, Beer, and Pod Sequences and their are, guests are solely their own and not any of the entities that they might represent. Correct. Except for the fact that Daughtry uh, was uh, just uh, not deserving of the title mm. and just makes mediocre music. Mm. And we are back once again. Thank you so much for sticking with us through this episode. We have just one more one more segment to to go over. Yeah, one more segment or entity or a group of segments, however uh, we want to call it. Uh, we're going to talk about Cincy Brewcast and all things the gnarly gnome. Mm-hmm. So, this Cincy Brewcast was uh, the all the Andes show. Uh, so, so I'm noticing so before you say anything, I'm noticing something very funny. Between your notes, where you wrote down all the Andes, and my all the Andes. And this is something that I actually kind of jokingly called Gnome out on on Instagram and kind of mentioned in the Weekly Pint. You have Andes spelled A-N-D-I-E-S. I have it spelled A-N-D-Y-S, which is how Gnome has it in the show notes mm-hmm. and as the title. The question that I posed to him on on the Instagrams was... What is the proper spelling of the plural of, of Andy? Is it A A N D Y S A N D I E S? Is it just A N D I? Or is it like fish to where the plural of Andy is Andy? And what do you call a group of Andes? I think if the shift beers crew was here and still had buttons, they would just go fucking no. <laughs> Uh, uh, so by the way, Josh, we, we need a copy of that button, if you don't mind, because you are 100% right. No, uh, but from our standpoint of trying to, now, first of all, our listening audi- audience is never going to see our notes. No. They're never going to see how we <laughs> spelled it. However, <laughs> your show notes, your show notes, when you put the show notes in, yes. you want to have your I show notes it. correct. And, and so I totally get why. Yeah, you know, you're you're saying you know is it is what it is X it? Y Z? What are we doing here? I mean, do I have do I do I had this weird uh, do I have this weird apostrophe at the end of something? Because much like pronunciations, which there was a beautiful, beautiful mispronunciation of Hefeweizen in Cincy Brewcast. They went Hefeweizen. They did that on purpose. Oh, one hundred percent, and it it's was on beautiful. Purpose. Did I do that? Yes, you did, and you meant to do it. Uh, But much like pronunciation, I want to make sure that there are as few spelling errors as possible in the show notes. And I don't know what to put for the plural of Andy. I don't know what to do. The beers, all the Andes brewed by some of the Andes. Mm -hmm. So the, the gist of... The collaboration is that there are so many uh, people in the brewing industry, mostly leaning towards brewers, Mm -hmm. that are named Andy. Do you have a list of all of the Andys that were involved? Uh, I I do, but what I did is I wrote them in your notebook. Oh, okay. Okay. I was wondering how these these words appeared on on this page of mine. Um, I'll go over real quick who was all involved in this because it really is. Can you read my handwriting? Not really, but I'll do my best. Okay, I'll that'd be great. I'll do my best. We have Andy Bird from Braxton who wanted to put the uh, double IPA into gin barrels. Nice. Andy Foltz from Casual Pine Hamilton, which we all know is where Gnome lives. Uh, mm-hmm. He wanted Vienna malt and Galean hops. Okay. Andy McLeese, Yeah, Andy McLeeson from Brink. He wanted Maris Otter malt and Galaxy hops. Love that malt. Nice hops. Uh, Great hops. Andy Reynolds, who was the guest on the show, uh, he is from Alexandria Brewing, and he wanted Simcoe hops. And then there was the gnome. Very nice he, guy. Uh, educated. Uh, I'll let you know. Are, are you talking uh, about edu- gnome or Andy Reynolds? No, Andy Reynolds. Okay. Educated. Okay. Uh, brewing school. Educated. 
nice. Very nice. He, he sounded like he knew exactly what he was talking about. Very I had already said gnome, so I wasn't sure. Respect the when, hell out Wanted of to it. clarify. Um, I have yet to meet Andy Reynolds. Um, I told my Josh that we need to go down to Alexandria I'd, Brewing I'd love soon. To, I'd love to talk to Andy, Ren Andy Reynolds. Yeah. Love to. Yeah. Absolutely. And then who who was the last one? Uh, the Gnarly Gnome. Yeah. yeah and yeah, so that guy. he has an association with this. If you go back and listen to the previous Cincy mm -hmm. uh, Brewcast where uh, he and Merrill got together and talk about the uh, – Beer, booze, and bonks uh, festival. Yes. Uh, Merrill just seems to have this uh, nervous tick where he can't call the gnarly gnome the gnarly gnome. He just <laughs> has to call him by his actual name. Uh, but to and be then fair, give out his address and yeah, that uh, his awkward. social security number, which is really weird. That, wa that was kind of awkward. I'm kind of surprised Gnome didn't cut that out. But, I mean, hey, teach their own. I think what it is is that their partnership is young, and he was like, yeah, I, d I don't, I should probably just let this go. He doesn't want to burn bridges before. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Gnome's contribution to this collaboration beer was because it was probably the most important decision to be made with this beer. Uh, yes, and it was twofold. Number one, he has nothing to do with brewing it. Nope. And number two, he said... No fruit needed. Which is accurate. Totally accurate. Very accurate, yeah. The beer is currently, uh, the beer is called All the Andes, brewed by some of the Andes, and it is currently on draft at Alexandria Brewing, uh, the Braxton Barrel House, and Casual Pint Hamilton. It is a double IPA. It sounds fantastic, so I'm hoping that I get some to one of those locations soon to where I can, I can, I can grab some. <laughs> Or if any of those locations listening want to drop off a, I don't know, howler, crowler, uh, something of the nature here at BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery, we'd love to taste the beer and yeah. uh, review the beer and talk about your business, your brand. Yes, L make, give make you all the Andy's sponsor. Give you exposure on this, which uh, is the number, what, 75... Uh, listed uh, uh, yes. trending podcast. Seven, 73rd podcast in the Canada food podcasting category. That's right. So uh, bring it over We're here. We're reaching people. Bring it over here. We're touching lives. That's right. For better or worse, hopefully we don't get any more restraining orders over that, but hey. What else do you have there, Julia? Uh, they did a really good discussion about the beer, about brewing the beer, about kind of the, you know, collaboration with everyone going, well, what, what would you want? What would you want? What's going to work together? Because some hops you can't mix with other hops and still have a good flavor or, or smell or taste profile. So it was what, really cool to hear them talk about that. What, what, notes, I, what notes do you have on the essentially live... 23 and me profile that uh, the gnome and Andy were doing on their heritage and then you know German you know coming to Cincinnati and everything and, and trying to find out you know it's like 30 or 40 minutes of you know talking about um, their maybe connected history yeah they the show definitely took a very sharp left turn into both their ancestry, uh, their families coming to the United States, where they came from, and a lot about Cincinnati history. Um, I believe they asked uh, Jangle from the Shift Beers podcast to provide the date, to look up the dates for their families coming over. Yeah. Because they were mentioning, you know, dates in the 1600s, which sounds... your resource. For all things for, history. Yeah, yeah, history dates. Yeah. Yeah. I did think it was interesting that one thing that I actually, that I, I really did learn that I was not aware of, Cincinnati was formerly called Porkopolis. You know, 90% of our listeners should know that by now. If you ever see, like, these small iron fences in yards in Cincinnati, mostly in probably the, the downtown over the Rhine, uh, you know, kind of the Mill Creek-ish area. Yep. These, you know, fences that you can step over, they're only maybe a few, you know, two, three feet high at most. They're not to keep people out of your yard, but it's for when Cincinnati was a big pork production uh, city industry. It was to keep the pigs out. Yep. Not necessarily people out or in. 
two other things that I had about um, Cincy Brewcast. We talked about kind of building Probably building the these same connections. Two things that I still had Most, on, yeah, you, on my notes. You start. You start with your notes. What did? What were you going? No, to no, bring no, up? no, no. Ladies first, please. Well, Chris isn't here anymore. So, oh, me. Yeah. Oh, you. okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah, see. No. I see where you're going with this. There is a connection that is being torn apart on this episode of Cincy Brewcast. Paradise Brewing is becoming the bad guy. I don't want to dig too deep into it because no, it's their words, not uh, ours. I, I really want to say listen to were, the show. There was a mention but, about maybe, you know, yeah. sort of like small players or uh, big players wanting to be bigger or that sort of thing. There, mm-hmm. there was a little a little thing. Um, I don't I don't want to call it. I, I don't want to overblow it. It's just one of those things to keep your eye on but yeah. you're right yeah uh, that was one of my notes there 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 may be and, and again definitely listen to the episode to get all the details on what could be a beef or a pork depending mm. on your cincinnati history no that sounded wrong and this is not last week's episode we are clean this time around but yeah check it out on on their thoughts on on paradise brewing they're good they're very good, good. so what else did you have marco the other thing i had mm-hmm uh, was something that we really didn't talk about on on like covering this episode. However, they brought it up. Yes. Uh, uh, big sis, the event mm-hmm. came up. Big sis, yeah, yeah. The big sis fear, yeah. It 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 happened, and I guess I guess there was a little. I don't know. Uh, they wanted they wanted to make next year. They wanted to improve next year. Well, they did say that this year was a little lackluster just due to COVID. There wasn't a lot that they could do to have a big event to celebrate the life of Mike Cisneros like they wanted to or like they have kind of in in, in previous years. I think they meant it from uh, front to back. Mm -hmm. I think they meant it from brewery participation or engagement to the, the overall release events action that sort of thing there is now a committee well they're trying to form a committee they're trying, trying to, to form get a right committee. right i don't believe it exists yet no please correct uh-huh. us if if we are incorrect on this i firmly think that's a great way to go i mean get uh, people together who believe in a cause have them be in charge and and direct mm-hmm. uh, the the way that this is going to look yeah. uh, going forward. That's great. Uh, what I will say is I am I'm going to raise my hand and say I'm I'm personally liable for not helping to uh, make the event better than it was. I truly want to support the cause i have not been and first of all i i can't speak on behalf of the place that i you know i brew for mm-hmm. as we stated in the disclaimer right this is marco but, speaking as marco right. not as any other part but of any other entity yeah. i would love to be present on brew day i would love to be part of you know the the conforming of you know whatever happens and I would love to be part of enjoying the beer and I haven't that's that's my fault and I want to correct that okay. and I, I it's not that I don't wish the event the best I have every year mm-hmm. but nobody's pressing me to feel this but I do feel a sense that you know what I, I need to I need to make this as important as many of the other beer events that I make important and I should go to. Or potentially even and, and please correct me if I am overstepping and speaking for you on this, but as a member of of now the Cincinnati Beer Podcast community, Mike played a huge role in creating well the the you know, the main role I, I would like to say in creating Cincy Brewcast. So I think that we both have a bit of an obligation to ensure that we can try to be involved as much as possible because Cincy Brewcast is 
it, as Gnome would say, it brings the voice of Cincy Craft to Cincinnati. And we should definitely try to be as big of a part of that of that celebration as we can. So I'm with you. I can't brew beer. I, you shouldn't trust me in that back room where, where all those shiny tanks are. I will pull levers that should not be pulled. I will pour things into tanks that should not be poured into. I'll laugh while I'm doing it. I'll have a good time. But I will. I, I would also like to step up I, and say that for next year's Big Sis, I'd like to see from a podcasting standpoint from a non-brewing standpoint what can i do to help what can i do to make this an event and not just a beer release if that makes sense yeah i'm with you uh julia i mean when i started listening since he brewcast uh mike Naris was part of the voice and i i and now with us uh doing this I, it just ups my uh, it just ups my passion for uh, the overall event and mm -hmm. so I, I definitely think that I'm not stepping out of bounds where I say you know my presence and I won't speak for you but it sounds like you you want to have a presence so yeah. I'm looking forward to that yeah so Gnome hit us up let us know what we can do and We'll make next year. We'll we'll contribute as much or as little as you want us to, to yeah. step in. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, I mean, let let let's not uh, uh, we we get get too out in front of our skis, right? Yeah, yeah, for so, sure. But good episode. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. As far as you know, the 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 Andes brewed by some of the Andes, and they they get out what they want to get out. Go support local. Go support craft. Uh, go get uh, go get some of the all the Andes. Yep, and again, it is at Alexandria Brewing, Braxton Barrel House, and Casual Pint Hamilton. They will not uh, be providing it in packaging unless some of those locations want to provide howlers, crowlers, growlers, what have you. So the only way to get this is to visit one of those tap rooms. And uh, again, it's a double IPA that sounds phenomenal, and I am going to make my best effort to get out there and get some. Awesome. So I th that was all that I had for Cincy Brewcast. That I'm I'm out. Are you I ready am. to move on to other things, Gnome? Yep. Let's all do right. It. So Gnome released an episode of Prost this week, and this episode of Prost he covered Urban Artifacts Bushel, which is their uh, their apple. Is it a Goza or is it just yep. an apple? Is it a Goza? Yeah, okay. It's a Goza. I didn't have that in my notes, so thank you for being my backbone, for being uh, the support. I'm sure my, I'm right my or structure. wrong, either way. Either way, someone will let us know, I'm sure. Um, just a real quick recap of it. Um, Bushel sounds like a absolutely phenomenal fall beer if you don't want to do pumpkin, because apple, apple cider, that is another fall staple. Um, they use 29 bushels of apples to make bushel. I'm saying bushel a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. It's, That's it, right. it's what it's about. Uh, Gnome was not entirely certain how much a bushel was in this episode of Prost. Uh, hey, we got you, Gnome. Uh, we should make this a segment where we, like, verify like things. Correct the Gnome? Or are you just saying in no, general? No, we're, we're assisting the Gnome. So. True. True that. Uh, True that. All right, so we got some we got some stats. We do. Julia, when we say stats, do we have... Like a, like a, it, maybe we should get something in the future when we have like stats. We go stats and we have like a, like we'll an intro a for stuff, like a stinger like, sounder yeah. or something. All right. So a <laughs> uh, bushel Very of apples is 48 pounds, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, the amount of weight that my doctor told me I needed to lose to correct oh. uh, for my height weight. Which is fantastic. Uh, I just want to say BMI charts are bullshit. Don't go purely by that. If your doctor only goes by BMI charts, get a new doctor. All right, Julie, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Yes. I might want to see your doctor. <laughs> uh, so a bushel of apples is 48 pounds. And so for a bushel, uh, it's 1,392 pounds of apples in one brewing or round of bushel that's a lot of apples that's right that's a lot of apples that's a lot of apples uh, a lot of weight 
I mean, as as usual, Gnome loved the beer, Urban Artifact. I don't know if they've ever put out a bad beer. Some of their beers may not be flavor-wise down your wheelhouse. Uh, not every beer that Urban Artipa Artipact, not <laughs> I've had beers. Yeah. Not to not every Boom. not every beer that Urban Artifact puts out flavor profile wise is for everyone, which is fine. Some people love pickle, some people hate pickle. Some people will love apples, some people won't. But Gnome has said that, you know, this is this is a phenomenal beer. He loves it. Uh, he gave his his standard tell for when he absolutely loves and really, really enjoys what he's drinking. So it was it was another great episode of Pros covering uh, covering Urban Artifacts Bushel. So if you like Apple and you're not sure if you want more of a cider or a beer, grab you some. Yeah, dig into it if uh, you you know you, you you like Urban Artifact. If you want to dig into you know what they do, it sounds like a, a phenomenal product um, and. It really looked just fantastic in the glass. Yeah. So go out, uh, search out Prost by the Gnarly Gnome on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, subscribe to Everything Gnome on YouTube. Also, uh, follow, share, and... Uh, buy some of his merch. Buy some of his merch. He's as some Julia great merch and I there. have. Yes. Uh, Julia and I have Gnarly Gnome merch. Yep. So we fully support the Gnome in what he does, and we appreciate the Gnome for uh, his support in what we do. Absolutely. And we call him out in our show notes Yep. for his uh, side hustle because, you know, all of us, uh, pretty much all of us, mm -hmm. uh, have a side hustle in one way or another. And so he has one as well. So the, if you're looking to get into podcasting or uh, ha have a podcast and look for some additions, mm -hmm. you know, go to Gnome Creative and, you know, he can help you figure that out. Yeah, he can definitely help you out with any of your audio, visual and video needs. So pictures. Um, he did. He does our outro, our intro, and our stinger. Probably should have said those in a different order, but that's okay. That's fine. So if you like the the music that we play during the episode, 99% of it is from the Gnarly Gnome, from gnomecreative.com. So definitely if it's something that you like, look him up. Uh, he takes gorgeous photography, so if you need any imagery needs, he's your guy. If you need any video shot he's your guy if you need any audio assistance be it producing a podcast just creating some sound clips he is your guy and if you need anybody to come and uh talk about and review your uh beer and spaces i mean you know we certainly are open to do that yeah, uh especially I'm, if it's utopias yes yeah. exactly yeah which is an excellent lead-in to the weekly pint <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. Welcome back. We are uh, about to run into or cover the weekly pint. So yeah, which is the last thing that we have to cover tonight, which is good because we've had beers. Yeah, we've had beers, we've had beers. Uh, before our um, last segment, mm -hmm. uh, which our special guest for the past few weeks is back. Our guest is back to cover our last segment. Uh, but so weekly pint uh, happens on uh, Monday nights, usually uh, between 9 and 9.30. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a live stream. It's a, a live it's happy a hour. live happy hour yeah. where the Gnarly Gnome puts out on all of the social medias everywhere, all, all the socials. And uh, you can uh, follow along. You can interact with everybody. Usually, uh, mm -hmm. Julie and I are on there, and you yeah. can interact with us. Please, if you see us on there, interact with us. Um, Tell us hi. But anyway, uh, yesterday, I guess the biggest thing, other than some, you know, label approvals, mm -hmm. where which Astra, are always fun, yeah. Yeah, Astro was doing some stuff, and yeah. I guess I mean some other places were doing some stuff. The biggest thing was that uh, the gnome was going to release the uh, brewery list, yes. not the tap list, but the brewery list for the uh, Beers, Booze, and Bonks Festival. Yes, happening November 20th 
get tickets at thegnarlynoom.com slash tickets. It's going to be a great time. Great time. He did not release the uh, podcast promo codes, but he 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 did. I'm sure they, he'll contact us with those soon. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Without a doubt. And then we did uh, discuss Sam Adams' Utopias. Yes. Quite heavily. Yes. So, um, so it is confirmed that Sam Adams is going to have, I don't know if you want to say a tent, a booth, a table. I'm not sure exactly how how they're going to have things set up at the Beers, Booze, Bonks, Boinks, Binks Festival. But Sam Adams will be there. And they may or may not be giving out utopias. Gnome did the math. And for them to get a, uh, I believe, a half barrel of utopias, it would only be about $38,000, which we're worth it. Yeah, I mean... Since any craft beer drinkers are worth it. For for what that costs, I mean, that's a no-brainer, really. Right, right. So it's utopias, no beers, booze, bunks, boinks, binks, banks, blonks. Yep. Yeah. Let's I mean, he didn't say it wasn't going to be there. No, true. He didn't so, say it wasn't going to be there. So my so truth is that it will be there. Yeah, and then he did this uh, flex. He just he just flexed on the show. He's like, hold on a second, and then he he just went, you know, went to the back, behind re- him. reached behind him, and grabbed that uh, beautiful, just you know, glowing, glowing bottle, and said, uh, "Was that 2019 or 2018, 2019 bottle of Utopia?" Well, I think it was 2019. Could 19? be 2018. Okay. okay. Uh, and and said. Hey, I'm gonna get the right glass. Grabbed a Utopias glass and then just, just domed some Utopias. Yeah. Just, just right at us. Yeah, my my just Josh in asked. The face. My Josh was actually concerned about me. He was like, "Why, Julia? Why are you weeping? What? Yeah. What's what's wrong, my love? What? I what is happening? Public? What what is this gnome saying on this show that is making you cry? And I Correct. said, it's not these these are not tears of of sadness or of of anger. These are tears of awe and just yeah. pure elation that someone that we know yeah. has utopia. The nectar. The nectar of the gods. Yes. Um, we're still waiting for Sam Adams to to reach back out to us. Hey, uh, about uh, our bottles of utopias. I mean, I know that we say two bottles, one for each, but we'll share. I mean, one bottle is would. really all we need. We would share. Yes. We we would share. And so and we Sam will. Adams, not just would, we will share. We will share. Utopias. Absolutely. Uh, and so, Sam Adams, I mean, just to make sure you know how to get in contact with us, uh, you can reach us at uh, Truth Beer Pod uh, pretty much on all the social medias uh, and also... Uh, truthpod at gmail.com. Yes. So I do want to take a really quick break and I'm going to whisper. There are two women at the table behind us that have like almost a full charcuterie board set up. They have meats and cheeses and crackers set up while they're drinking their beers. They, have, they brought paper plates. It's amazing. I kind of want to ask them if I can have a couple crackers I'm gonna have to, to go with my dancing in the dark stout. But I'm afraid to. Oh, they they look like badass bitches. <laughs> anyway, sorry, just had to take a real quick hey, what tangent are, there to what let what you know. Billy Idol songs? Would you like to hear, Julia? All of them. If you could sing all of them to me, that, along with the the elation that I have knowing that <laughs> knowing that Utopias As without could possibly be the beer at the Sam Adams got no venue. At the Beers, Booze, Bunks Festival. It makes me happy. Eyes without a face. Your impressions make me happy, Marco. Or they at least make me laugh, if nothing else. Tell you what, Julia. Being here on a Tuesday, talking about beer, talking about... Booze, talking about bonks. Talking about (laughs) bonks. Uh, Get bonked. That was another uh, takeaway from the Weekly Pint this week. Yeah. I tell you what, doing all this on a Tuesday night, it 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 just for me. Uh, Danny says Friday is a feeling. For me, my Friday is Tuesday. I know it's might be hard for all of you in podcast land to wrap your head around that, but I you know I do a full time gig that you know is 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 good to me and and I'm good to it. I'm I'm very uh, 
I'm I'm going ahead and, and brag on myself. I'm I'm pretty good at what I do. And yeah. uh, Tuesday is essentially my Friday, so I I lean into my brewing my brewing job on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and I pick right back up at my full-time job on Friday. So yeah. being here uh, essentially on my Friday is uh, it's feeling, Julia. It, it is. is a feeling. It is. So are we wrapping up the weekly pint and then uh, wrapping up this week's episode of Truth, Beer, and Podsequences? Uh, we're about to. All right. I can't be happier. I'm, I'm truly enjoying this. Our inaugural episode with our upgraded equipment to have uh, some fun guests in the in the Cincinnati, you know, craft beer pod area. I just it, it, it was, was great. Fun. Yeah. So it, Chris and Brian, thank you again so much for planning to just kind of you know crash our, our podcast and, and possibly heckle us. But you ended up being on the show and and it was amazing. It was really great to to get the support from you guys and to know that uh, that you're into what we're doing. It really means a lot. It really does. And thank you to all the listeners, brand new listeners. Thank you to everyone who's come along uh, for uh, the past 10 episodes. Let me tell you something. Uh, stick with us. I appreciate your support. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Mom. Thank you to all of our friends, all of our family. Thank you to all of our friends and family. Thank you to all the podcast uh, hosts and and everybody who's listening uh we are really going to do some fun stuff uh thank you to bc's bottle lodge for hosting us truly appreciate it come out uh you're looking for craft beer uh when this podcast airs this tap list here at is BC's ridiculous. is so going good. to be so ridiculous. Thank you to producer Kenny and all that you do. Truly mm-hmm. appreciate it. And uh, I really look forward to how much fun we're going to have in the future yep. uh, with our new capabilities. Yes. Uh, you, yes. You, we you may listeners. have more more sound effects because we have a soundboard as part of our new equipment. And. It's going to be fun. And. And annoying. And. <laughs> We have the capability to call. Yes. I we mean, could actually it, have someone call in and record them on our podcast as it's, good or bad of an idea as that may be. We will. It's, I mean, it's we, possible. The it, possibilities they, are endless. We, we are uh, heading uh, to the moon. Uh, so as uh, Saunders says, to yes, the moon. To the moon. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. So thank you to uh, to our not show sponsor, Newport Report, for supporting us, even though we definitely have not been in contact with them as much as Shift Beers have. Give Newport Report a follow. Listen to, to their episodes. They, I believe they live stream their episodes on Fridays on YouTube. They release their episodes, uh, I believe, over the weekend or, or possibly Monday as well. But, but check them out. It is Shift Beers in Flannel. It's it's Canadian beers. It's beers that you that some of them are available. Flying Monkey is one that they have reviewed several times that I have seen here mm-hmm. in Cincinnati. Um, not a lot of crossover, but it is really really cool to watch. You know, two guys having a great time talking about sports and movies and whatever their mood is, yep. and reviewing beers that we may never see. But it's 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 awesome to see other people around the world in, in you know, North America specifically just loving craft beer. It's and fantastic. So follow the Newbert Report. Please at do. the Newbert Report. Um, I believe they are on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and I believe Instagram as well. We also have some fun ideas and really special ideas uh, going forward yes. with the fact that we have expanded capabilities. Yes. So look forward to and you should look forward to everything that we're going to produce as content and thank you everyone for listening share the show follow uh, follow the show share the show uh you know talk about the show way too much at work if you yes. don't mind and yes. get everyone to get on board with truth beer and podsequences thank you so much julia marco next week right same time same place did you have someone that wanted to share a final story with us with the release of Utopia as it happened yesterday. We should be hopefully seeing it hit shelves sporadically in the area sometime soon. Uh, did you want to share another, you know, your story again uh, or d- have someone share that story for we, you? We One have secured, uh, as well as our equipment upgrades, yeah. we have uh, guests 
uh, special guests, and I want our special guests to uh, have. Uh, we're going to clear out. We're going to mm-hmm. clear out completely and let the special guest uh, take over here. And Julia, uh, let's do this again next week. Absolutely. How about a cheers? Cheers. Hello. This is Morgan Freak. I want to give you an account of Marco and his son. Marco and his son, two years ago, went to Sam Adams Taproom in Cincinnati, where Marco paid for an ounce of Utopias. His son was there, enjoyed the day, and Marco was pleased. And as they took the ride home, Marco turned to his son and asked, Vincent, did you enjoy the day? And he said, it was the best day ever. So Sam Adams and Boston Beer, as you're about to release Utopias, please consider helping Marco recreate this beautiful moment with his son and send two bottles of utopias to julia and marco at treat beer and consequences catch us on all your uh social media whether it be facebook twitter instagram you can catch us on uh treat beer and consequences uh at gmail.com and thank you